All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to give you a cool analogy to calculate the determinants. So either three by three or four by four or any of them. So how do you evaluate determinants? First of all, you got to choose a row or a column to expand it at. at. And in this case, because it's the first example, let's just choose the first row. But in general, it's good to do stuff with you know, lots of zeros. So in fact, a maybe more clever choice would be the third column. But here, let's just do it along the rows. And then what you have to do is you have to draw a sign table. What does that mean? It means the thing on the bottom top, on the top left corner is a plus, and every time you jump, you change signs. So if you jump here, it's minus, so plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, so plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and then minus, plus, minus. All right, and once you made your decision, in this case, the first row, it means that your determinant is plus something, minus something, plus something. And it turns out the stuff next to the plus is, not only, you put a plus two, minus three, and a plus zero. So again, plus minus plus, you put the stuff, you know, all the numbers here. And then the next thing is, it's just a bunch of determinants. In this case, a bunch of smaller determinants. And the question is, what kind of determinants? And here is where video games come into play again. And again, the story is, I used to play lots of video games and people are like, ah, don't do it, it makes you stupid. But no, this is my revenge. How do you find those little determinants? Again, just think like Bomberman. Yay. Hooray. Da, da, da. So it's my artistic rendition of Bomberman. And what is Bomberman? It's just this figure that places a bomb, and the feature of that bomb is that it destroys everything in the same row and same column of this bomb. And so in particular, to evaluate determinants, first, place a bomb at two, so your first entry. The bomb destroys everything in the same row and column, and just take the determinant of the rest. So zero, three, one, zero. And then just continue. Place a bomb in the second entry, it destroys everything in the same row and column. And you're left with 2, 3, minus 1, 0. And lastly, 0, you place a bomb here. And it destroys everything here. You have determinant of 2, 0, minus 1, 1. Wait, sorry, 2, 0, minus 1, 1. And then you just evaluate those determinants you could do Bomberman again, but for two by two, it's easier just saying that the determinant is day D minus BC. So here it's two times zero times zero, which is zero, minus three times one, which is minus three, and then minus three times two times zero, minus three times minus one, which is minus three, and what about the zero? Notice we don't even have to evaluate this determinant because it's zero times something. And this is why zeros are very useful for determinants. They actually save us a lot of work. And so we get two times minus three, which is minus six. So yeah, um, we get uh, minus three times, minus three times three, which is minus nine, and then zero, which is zero, and we're left with minus 50. Cool, so that is a determinant, doesn't have to be positive, can be negative here.
All right, and in fact, as I said, zeros are very good with determinants. So in fact, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's evaluate the following crazy determinant. So, one, zero, 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 zero. Square root of five, four, zero. Oh, one over zero, infinity, oh my god. <laughs> Hopefully they disappear. Pi, E, 3, 42, I, lambda, 0, 0, 2, 3, 9,001, because it's over 9,000, 0, 0, 5, 7. Oh my god, this is horrible. You know, you should have this, this emoji with the scared thing, okay? But it turns out it's not too bad to do because there are a lot of zeros. So let's choose the lower column with lots of zeros, which, for example, you can choose this row. And so again, you start with a plus. So plus one okay, times the determinant of the rest, which here is four, zero, one over zero infinity, e, three, 42i, 0, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, 5, 7. All right. So lambda disappeared, and 9001 disappeared, you know, so that's good. And um, what about the other terms? Well, the next terms would be minus 0 times something, plus 0 times something, etc., etc. So they don't even appear in a determinant. But it's pretty nice. All right, and so let's continue. Let's choose a row or column with lots of zeros, which, for example, you can choose this column. And so you're left with 1 times plus minus plus 3 times the determinant of the rest. So 4, 1 over 0, infinity, 0, 0, 2, 3, 5, 7. Good, we got rid of the i, but honestly, I'm still worried about this 1 over 0 and the infinity. But let's see, let's just continue. So here, for example, the first column has lots of zeros. So it becomes, again, 3 times, again, plus 4 times the determinant of the rest, 2, 3, 5, 7, and whew, the 1 over 0 disappears, so it's good. And you might argue that 0 times 1 over 0, that's 1, but again, that's just for comedic relief. So what you're left with is 12 times this determinant, 2 times 7 minus 3 times 5, which is 12 times 14 minus 15, which is minus 12. So, in this horrible determinant, all the bad terms disappeared, and you're left with minus 12. So, I think it's pretty neat, and you know, may Bomberman be with you. Alright, so if you like this linear algebra extravaganza and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.